Social media. The epitome of how the world has increased technologically. Gone are the days where people had to write letters to speak to family or walk miles just to see an old friend. Now, you are able to see your friends and family and explore the world all with one smart device. That sounds pretty great, right? Social media has existed for years and we continue to spend countless hours expecting to see the same things that we see every day. We begin to visualize, compare, and talk badly about ourselves all because we fail to be the ideal that social media displays. We take photos and capture videos of the most intimate moments in our lives to be displayed on social media, putting on a show for the world to see. We look at likes, comments, shares to see how desirable we are to other people. Since when did we become so? What is it about social media that impacts society? Are those effects all positive attributes or is social media affecting us more than we thought? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Toy. Welcome to Come and Toy, where I talk even when no one is listening. Before I begin this video, I'd like to implore you to like, share, subscribe, and comment because it does help me a lot and because it shows how interested you are to hear me speak. To my current subscribers, I'd like to say thank you for the continued support and sticking around so that you see new videos. Thank you guys so much. We are going on 23 subscribers and strong and I'd just like to say again, thank you so much. What is classified as social media? Social media is defined as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. The basic social media platforms that we are accustomed to are YouTube, WhatsApp, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, among many others. However, each social media site can be classified in different categories such as social networks, media networks, discussion networks, as well as many others. In the earlier days, people used to communicate not only by phones or texts, but people used to write letters, pass messages verbally, or send messages in bottles? Allegedly. But for real though, social media began on May 24th, 1844 with a series of electronic dots and dashes taped up by hand on the telegraph machine. In the 1980s and the 90s, according to the history of social networking, on the technology site Digital Trends, the internet's, the internet's growth enabled the introduction of online communication services such as CompuServe, American Online, or Progeny. This gave rise to the earliest social media networks, beginning with short-lived Six Degrees Profile uploading service in 1997. This service was followed in 2001 by Friendster. The rudimentary platforms attracted millions of users and enabled email address registration and basic online networking. We will now go to the popular media sites that we know of now. Facebook was founded by Mark Zuckerberg in 2004 and it has 1.84 million billion users daily. Next site, YouTube. YouTube is an American online video sharing platform headquartered in San Bruno, California. Three former PayPal workers, Chad Hurdley, Stephen Chen, and Javed Karim created the service in February of 2005. Twitter. Twitter was founded in 2006 by Jack Dorsey, Evan Stevens, and B. Stone, and others as a micro site. By 2020, 22% of the U.S. adults were Twitter users, according to Instagram was founded in 2010 by Stanford graduate Kevin Strom as a photo sharing site and purchased by Facebook in 2012. How has social media impacted you? Take a minute to think about it because in order for us to understand the root of our social media usage, this question is key. Why do you use social media? Technology has grown on us simply because the world is evolving rapidly. And what can we do to be honest? 
Most people in this world have access to a smart device or the internet, making technology inescapable. Social media is also a scheme for money making, and although it helps us to do other things, the usage of social media can prove to be detrimental. Look, let's be truthful here. Social media is addicting because we can say, oh, let me watch one more YouTube video and then I go to sleep. Then one turns to two, two turns to six, six turns to seven. And then all the hours that we should use for sleeping is turning to liking Instagram pictures. Because of the addictive nature of social media, companies make money at the expense of our leisure. And you honestly can't blame them. Make your bread, right? We use social media not because of its addictive nature, but also because of our own insecurities. Fear of missing out. We feel as though we have to keep up, or as the world is moving on without us. So we feel compelled to check every little single detail on our social media platforms in fear that we might not understand what is happening. We're bored. In all honesty, what is there to do sometimes? We just keep on scrolling, keep on watching YouTube videos. Not everybody is going to be perfect. So sometimes we just keep on falling back in the habit of consistent scrolling. Social media can count as an escape from our stress, depressions and anxieties. When we are using social media, we tend to forget what is happening in our daily lives and so social media proves to be an opium for us. It's a door of escape from our daily trials and tribulations and basically anything that's happening around us. What we see is what we do and most of what we see is come from social media. Let's be honest, TikTok nowadays has been the trendsetter of challenges. Almost everybody nowadays is like, oh, I got this from TikTok. Yeah, I seen this from TikTok. Yeah, I'm gonna try this from TikTok. But some of the trends do more harm than good. They have this challenge on TikTok where this song is played and persons use a corset to basically cinch their waists. <laughs> this is an example of what the challenge looks like. Corsets are used to assist in posture while conforming the body in a favorable shape. Therefore, it emphasizes bust and the chest. The thing that caught me most about this challenge was the fact that persons who couldn't use a corset really looked like they were hurting themselves to achieve this unrealistic body image. And because corsets create such an image, it may leave other persons to even feel insecure about their own bodies and be wondering like, Oh, I wish I could look like her or how does hers look like that? So it leaves the space open for comparison between you and the person you are watching. Honestly, this challenge is so disgusting and I think that when persons are using social media, they should also educate their children on the dangers, the positives and the negatives on social media. Not everything is meant to be shared, especially when it comes to our young children. There was this challenge called the Foreigner Challenge in which they would play this song called Foreigner and children would basically share explicit, explicit photos of themselves. There was another challenge on TikTok where persons were basically moving to the side and showing off their side profiles. My initial reaction to this was, why does this make any sense? Why does your side profile matter. All these challenges do is decrease the self-esteem of others. Some people literally want gratification for their looks and some of them use trends like these to fish for compliments that could make a positive impact on other persons who feel down on their self-esteem. But people do anything for clothes. A next trend that is happening not only on TikTok but other forms of but other social media platforms is the glow up. Glowing up is basically a person trying to evolve themselves in 
somebody that is desirable to themselves so they change your mindsets and attitudes and also it's a physical thing where people buy new clothes new shoes in order to look good for themselves and honestly i'm all for that just do what you want to do and look good while doing it. It's wrong with wanting to look better by putting on a little bit of makeup, wearing nice clothes, changing your appearance or mindset. But the strain, of the strain of wanting to conform to society's beauty standards is what makes the glow up train so toxic. Don't prioritize wanting to put yourself in the ideal but instead use the glow up to make yourself feel more approachable to you. Don't feel insecure by wanting to look like somebody else. Do the globe train for yourself. Body image is defined by the Merriam-Webster dictionary as a subjective picture of one's own physical appearance established by established both by self-observation and by noting the reactions of others. Social media is a dominant contributor to what we think of ourselves, but we don't see it in plain sight. There are different body types that are existing on the social media platforms. Therefore, we are open to the concept of comparing ourselves to others. In all honesty, it is so easy to deceive people and lie on social media. On account of social media's untrue nature, we can't rely on what we see on social media and consider it as fact. Recently, an unauthorized picture of Khloe Kardashian got out and it was basically an unfiltered picture which she claimed that she didn't like. Compare that picture of Khloe Kardashian to the ones on her Instagram page. Clearly, that can show you how deceiving social media can be. Recently, I made a video about pretty privilege and how desirable beauty standards can give people advantages to things we use in our daily lives. And you go to the boss and you're not jealous, you're not spiteful, you're just rather curious. You go to the boss and you say, sir, um, why Kim and not me? Oh, because, um, you know how Kim is so, her face is so symmetrical and she has brown skin and her eyes are blue. That is why I gave her this position. She's such a beautiful woman. But you know, it's a low key under the quiet door. Kim never do no work at the time. For persons who don't fit in the beauty standards, they might become insecure because they're not seeing the representation of their body type on social media platforms. And they're not going to get the acceptance that they should get. And this can open the doors to many other things. There was a study conducted in 2015 called Social Media Thin Ideal Body Dissatisfaction and Disordered Eating Attitudes, which adds to the fact that the beauty ideal comes from what social media portrays. It says, and I quote, Furthermore, previous publications explain that the desire to achieve the beauty ideal emerges as the internalization of the portrayed image is as being exposed by social media. We always hear of women having issues with physical appearance but it has the ability to affect men as well. And I quote, men are faced with trends that give rise to the desire for a muscular and lean body. This may result in body dissatisfaction. Body dissatisfaction is associated with a plethora of health consequences. Social media has been named one contributing factor for male dissatisfaction. Due to this beauty ideal, it leaves space for insecurities and doubt in one's physical appearance. The images on social media sites are idealized and, and unreal due to the digital altercation, thereby setting high expectations from individuals in society. Imperfections are removed by airbrushing and using other digital apps to whiten teeth, slim waist, and reduce sizes in order to be accepted by beauty ideals. These techniques may further lead to negative consequences of increased body dissatisfaction, body modification, and low self-esteem issues. Unrealistic images of femininity, beauty, success, and body shape promoted through social media images promoted through social media images are associated with the development of eating disorders and body dissatisfaction disorders. One minute big 
clips are in tiny waists are in and where the disproportionate figures will be in and out does the kylie jenner lip challenge ring a bell it is the perfect example of how social media is a contributor for body image due to what is presented to us society is always going to be subjective when it comes to beauty because different people perceive things in different ways Things are subject to change and people throw away old for new real fast. I spoke about the physical strain social media has on us, but what about the mental strains? Social media co contributes to depression and it is often described as a force for togetherness, but a digital device can't substitute for social connection. It will try, but it fully won't. According to an article entitled social media and mental health the fans need face-to-face -face connection to be mentally healthy nothing reduces stress and boosts your mood faster or more efficiently than eye-to-eye -eye contact with somebody who cares about you the more you prioritize social media interaction over in-person relationships you are at risk for developing mood disorders such as anxiety or depression Instagram was or still is in the process of removing likes which is a huge step to building a more positive platform. We care about numbers too much, for real. And this is something that we should stop doing. If you post content and it doesn't do well, persons will overthink it and choke it up to being as they are not desirable enough for cyber attention. Social media can even affect you when people post about their accomplishments. Not that anything is wrong with that, but it can cause the average person to start overthinking and just be like, oh, why can't I be like Samantha who lives in a mansion and has tons loads of money? What? We use social media platforms to tear others down and spread accusations, yet when it is time for us to spread awareness about the things that matter, we fail to do so. Cyberbullying or cyber harassment is a form of bullying or harassment using electronic means. So when you send a threatening message to someone and send har all sorts of harmful data to that person, it's cyberbullying. The act of cyberbullying has claimed the lives of too many people, especially adolescents. When you use your words, use them wisely. And if you feel the need to send harmful things to people to ridicule them, get help because something is obviously wrong with you. To so every negative side in this life, there are positive things, and so that we'll be looking at the positive sides of social media. Businesses are closed a lot because people have been unemployed and now are relying on different means to gain income. People are staying in now, which increases persons' need for online services. According to an article titled, How the COVID-19 Pandemic is Affecting E-Commerce, more customers are shopping for groceries online than ever before, with 58% of customers now comfortable with using digital tools to assist them with online shopping. This includes Gen Z and Millennial shoppers. In 2015, just 35% of shoppers were comfortable with online grocery shopping, which is more significant. 65% of new digital shoppers say that they will continue to shop online for groceries in the future. 48% of grocery shoppers follow brand products on social media, giving many brands ample opportunity to reach a highly engaged uh, to reach highly engaged announcements or inspiration. Social media helps businesses in contacting their customers and also in negotiating advertisements or upcoming products. A package being delivered to your doorstep is so much better than going outside. It's honestly so scary out there. Social media is now facilitating education due to the pandemic. You have more persons actually using the online classes the online online platforms such as zoom and google meet in order to facilitate education it also makes it more convenient because you don't have to take public transport to go to school and so using the digital platform helps us to gain knowledge and understanding therefore becoming fulfilling persons people are using social media to communicate with others 
Social media communication is impacting the way we talk, although it shouldn't be used as a substitute for human communication. We're not able to send a quick call, a quick text, video call to the ones that we love. Social media facilitates pulling people from different parts of the world and different backgrounds together. We are able to have fun, make jokes and spread awareness about issues. Trust me, the pandemic memes are getting me through. In my phone gallery, there are more photos of memes other than me and my family. It's not that my bad mind, but my just love joke. Social media has the room for voices to be heard about what is happening in this world. Black Lives Matter, Asian hate, as well as other things that are happening in our, in our world and different parts of the world. We are able to learn and experience different things and call for action when it is needed. A lot of what we learn comes from social media and so we tend to share knowledge to others. Quarantine was the push for a certain, the surge of YouTube channels. Am I telling any lies? My reason for starting YouTube wasn't due to quarantine boredom, but it might have contributed to it. Not only me, but a lot of persons have been using different social media platforms to display their talents and creativity. Look at me, I'm here teaching you about the wonders of social media. In all honesty, social media may not be all good, and all bad like all things in this world you have to strike a balance and find some ways to use social media safely most social media platforms have a mute button block button unfollow button use them to your advantage you aren't obligated to post a story or a whatsapp status nor are you obligated to text somebody every single day use that time that you'd use on social media to fuel yourselves to become better persons Use yourself to bring positivity online and in the physical world too. Because in all honesty, social media isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Note, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, share and comment. And I will be seeing you next week.